everybody. Today we are going to be making mermaids. Not just any mermaids, we're gonna be making watercolor pencil mermaids. So we're going to start off by needing a piece of watercolor paper, naturally. You're also going to need some pencils. You can use either an art set of pencils or just a regular old number two like you do at school. You might wanna have handy a pencil sharpener of some sort and an eraser. You're gonna need either watercolor pencils like these, these are Prismacolor water pencils, or you could use uh, regular colored pencils, you could use crayons, you could paint this with acrylic paint, although it's not recommended. Um, I would probably say you'll have an easier time if you either use the watercolor pencils, the regular colored pencils, or the plain watercolor. Um, and you'll of course need some brushes. Uh, you don't need very big brushes. You want to use some little to medium sized brushes, maybe a tiny detail one. Don't use a big brush like this or you'll just go all over the whole picture. You want to have, of course, your handy paper towels. We like to have those around and you'll need your container for your water as well. Okay. Today's video is not going to be quite as step by step as it is in some of the other painting videos that we do. That's partially because uh, watercolor is a little bit looser and you're not going to really get the level of detail that you get with acrylic paintings. Some people do, but not the style that we're going to do today. And also because uh, mermaids are kind of personal, a lot of people feel a deep connection to them. Um, and so you wanna do something that's gonna be a little bit more your own style, okay? And my style is not gonna be exactly like your style, so we're keeping it a little bit looser today to give you guys some room to stretch your art muscles, okay? So I'm gonna show you a preview of what we're going to make. <gasps> a beautiful mermaid with flowing hair and a beautiful aquatic background. You can change any of these details that you want to. This is just a picture that I'm gonna be showing you how to make today. All right, we'll get started then. Okay, let's get this mermaid going. So the one thing you wanna remember is that you want to keep your pencil marking marks that are very soft. If I do hard marks like that, then the thing trick to remember that is it's going to be hard to erase it okay if i do soft marks like that then it's going to be very easy to erase those see how that comes up much better than that really hard mark so try and challenge yourself to be very light with your pencil touch okay so i'm going to do a mermaid that's underwater and i'm going to start with her head okay so our head is going to be an oval we want to leave a little bit of space here and I'm just keeping it light and sketchy. If you have drawing pencils, you can see that I'm using an H pencil. If you don't have drawing pencils, it doesn't matter. Just use a regular pencil. So I'm doing a little oval here, and then I'm gonna come down below the oval, and I'm just gonna kinda do this little curve for her body. I'm gonna put her shoulders as a cross here. Okay, you want it to be a little bit wider than the oval on her head. And then I'm gonna do her hip bones. I'm gonna come down and do those down about here. So what I wanna do is I wanna be able to connect those with curves like that and kind of make an hourglass shape. See, do you see the hourglass? So these are gonna be her shoulders and this is gonna be her hips, okay? And then I'm gonna connect those with a curve like that. So now, She's got a little body there. I'm gonna do her neck coming down like this from the oval. And we're just roughing in the shape of the body. None of this is gonna be perfect, okay? We're just trying to get an idea of where she's gonna be. And then from here on these hips, I'm gonna continue this and kind of curve it the way I want her tail to go. So I'm gonna like that and then follow it. And I want it to get a little bit narrower the closer I get to the end of her tail. And if I decide not to use it, that's fine, I don't have to, or I can fork it out like this. There we go. And it's kind of like a teardrop shape here. And I'm coming out and fanning from this other way. Almost looks like two little leaves, doesn't it? If I wanted to, I could add extra details like those. This is gonna be very organic, very loose mermaid, okay? We don't have to do 
everything exactly the way that I'm doing it. It doesn't even all have to be planned or well thought out. We're just trying to do something relaxing and fun. There we go. I'm going to complete these little extra details there. And for her arms, I'm going to decide what I want her arms to be doing. I'm going to have my mermaid kind of waving. So I'm going to start off with a stick figure. And I know that everybody has drawn a stick figure before, right? So do little circles at the elbows. Another little circle here. And I like to do, do kind of a triangle when you actually get to the wrists, okay? And then from there, we can make our fingers. Three, four, and then on this side, her thumb is gonna be up from over there, is that right? Yes. <laughs> and then from here, we can go one, two, three, four, and then a little thumb coming out from there. You don't have to do all four fingers and a, and a thumb if you don't want to. You can make yours as cartoony as you want. Now we're gonna connect the outside edges. Do you guys see how I'm at the outside of the circle? Go from outside circle to outside circle, right there. Outside circle to outside circle. Hmm, this front arm is a little long, isn't it? Because we wanna have this arm from here and here should be the same length. I'm gonna move her hand. And since I drew lightly, which I hope you guys did too, I can fix this. So if you have at any point in time you make a mistake, you can just go right back to where you were, pause the video, and redo it. One, two, three, four, and then our little thumb there, okay? Now these guys look the same length, don't they? So same thing, top of the curve, top of that ball joint down to there, top of that ball down to this ball, edge of this ball down to that ball, edge to edge. Does that look like a mermaid? I think it does. So now I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna erase the lines that I don't want, which is my stick figure lines. Okay, I don't need those stick figure lines. I don't need my hourglass lines. I don't need her spine in there anymore. Okay, so we're gonna erase the lines that we don't want. I wanna keep those because I think those are fun details. You can just brush this off with your hands if you want to. If you have a brush, you can use a brush to brush it. You can erase those here. I wanna leave her jawline though, right? Everybody, she still needs a chin. So I'm gonna leave her chin. I'm gonna erase this here. Okay, and you, wanna, you can erase the lines below her fingers or you can leave them if you want to, it's up to you. Okay, if you missed a spot, don't worry about it. You can always go back and get it later. All right, so now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna connect her tail to her body. So we could do the classic Ariel from The Little Mermaid and do kind of this V shape and then give it a little fin flare. You could do, um, you could do just a straight line. Some people do a curve. You could add, you could give her a little skirt if you wanted to disguise it. And I'm gonna give her a bandeau top. A bandeau top is kind of like a, just a strip of fabric here that comes around. If you wanted to give her seashells, you could. If you wanted to give her starfish, you could do that. Should I show you guys? All right, I'll show you. So I'm gonna get rid of her bandeau and I'll bring it back for you later, okay? So if you wanted to do seashells, they start with an oval on the bottom and a prong up here, a prong out here, a prong out here, and then we scallop, scallop, and then you connect the scallops down. And there is your seashell. So if you wanna do two, then you would just have another one right over there. If you don't like the seashell and you wanted to do a starfish, then that would be pretty simple. You would just do like you normally do a star, okay? Do you guys all do this kind of star like that? If you do, you just take that and then you just erase your lines. And now you've got a starfish. You can make it a little bumpy on the edges if you want to, to make it look like, a, like an actual sea star that's gone a little pokey to it. You could even add like a little dot texture, like some starfish have those dots. You could do that, okay? If you have something else you could do, if you wanted to give her a bikini, you could give her a bikini. 
maybe she wants to. So that you could just start off with like that bandeau top like we talked about before, which is just kind of a rounded square. And then you can add some straps. You could change the neckline if you wanted to have a sweetheart neckline like that. You could do one like this where maybe she has a knot here and make it look like a big bow. You could do that. Okay, whatever kind of a top you want is okay. All of our mermaids are gonna have different fashion styles. There's some debate in the mermaid world as to whether or not mermaids have belly buttons. I like to give my mermaids belly buttons. If you don't want to, you don't have to. I'm not gonna yell at you for not having a mermaid belly button, okay? And once you have that, and if you wanna, you know, if, if at any point you wanna kind of round off any other point, other parts on the arm or anything, you can always change stuff up as you go. That's the great thing about drawing is nothing is set in stone, okay? So I've got her belly here and her little waist and we've got her fins that are coming out of her out of her tail okay I'm not gonna put any individual scales in right now I can do that later if I want to I'm gonna go ahead and do her face okay so people's faces have an imaginary line that goes across their face you don't have to do this line if you don't want to and if you imagine it was drawn up into five pieces okay you'd have one two three, four lines to divide it up into five pieces, right? Because your middle piece is your nose. This outer piece is your eyes. Okay, those two middle pieces. And then you have a piece on either side for the outsides of your face, okay? And then you have your irises in the middle of that. And below that, you kind of split your face into thirds again. So it just means two lines, because you have one piece, two piece, three piece, right? If you split it into, if you had, a piece of something and you were going to split it into thirds you would do two lines right you wouldn't do three lines because if you did one two three then you'd have four pieces so one two three two lines okay one of these is going to be our nose and we're just going to do a really simple nose so my simple nose is just kind of going to be like a, a rounded u shape and then we're going to do her mouth you could have her happy, you could have her sad. I'm gonna do a happy mermaid. I like to think that they have fun swimming out of the water. So I'm gonna start off with just a little line and I'm gonna give her a little bit of a dimple right there. And then I'm just gonna do her lower lip. Okay, and then if you want to, you can give her an upper lip, but I don't think I wanna give her an upper lip. Or if I do, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. So I'm gonna do a smile line, a wrinkle, not a wrinkle, a dimple, a lower lip, and then I'm gonna give her kind of a little cupid's bow there. And then we can sharpen up her chin here. Okay, sharpen up the edge of her face there. We can give her eyebrows. Do mermaids have eyebrows? I have no idea. If you wanna give her eyelashes, you can. I don't know if mermaids have eyelashes either or not. You can darken up her pupil. And then I like to do spokes on the wheel for the eyes, okay? The spokes on the wheel are kind of all those little lines. If you look into somebody's eyes and you see all those little lines in there, that's what those are. And then it's time for hair. So for her hair, I like to do mermaid hair in chunks because they have all these locks of wavy hair. It almost kind of resembles their tail, doesn't it? Okay, and I can come down. If you want to give her an ear, it's kind of a backward C and then a forward C. And then I'm going to do a wave here. I'll have her in her hair grow up because I like to think the current is waving her hair up. You could have curly hair if you wanted to give her mermaid curly hair. It's up to you. You can add some extra hair lines in here to show that she's got texture. And then if you do that, you're like, hmm, it's okay. But I wanna add some more. I can just add some of those curls coming right off the existing hair that I made. See that? I took the hair I had and then I just made it more. Nothing wrong with that either, is there? And you can add other shapes to her hair if you want to. Whatever you think is gonna make your mermaid hair look really good. But you want to keep it into being those kind of curly shapes, though. You want it wavy, because 
everybody's hair when they get it underwater, it's never quite perfectly straight. Everybody's hair gets a little bit wavy and curly in there. Okay. That looks pretty good. What do you guys think? Looks pretty good. If you want to, you can start to add some scales. You could do scales like this. You can do the kind of diamond pattern scales like that. If you wanted to do scales like that, you could do a mixture. But you, don't, you can do them all over or you can just do patches of scales like this. Which are kind of just doing U's over and over. I like to do patchy scales. Don't forget to turn them when her tail turns. Now it's like I'm doing them upside down because her tail turned upside down. You want to turn them with the tail, right? Like that. There we go. Hmm. She looks a little lonely, doesn't she? I think she needs some friends. So for her friends, I can get rid of these shapes. I don't need these anymore. How about some fish? I'm going to do this football shape. And I'm going to add a heart on the front side for lips. And I'm going to do a big circle because fish have big eyes. And then I'm going to do another circle inside of that. Okay, This is going to be the eye of the fish right here. And then I can add fins like that. These little scaly waves. And then big fins. I want to keep them kind of flatter on the back side. And I can I can I can wave them like that if I want to. I'm gonna add those ripples in the fin there. I'm still drawing lightly just in case. You never know when you might want to erase something. If you wanted to add more scales here on your fish, you could. Or you can leave it empty. You could even do, let's have another fish. You could do a long skinny fish like that. Same thing, doing the little heart for the lips. I could have a pointy top. And I could do a pointy fin down there. And then this would have more maybe spiky fins. Still having that big circle eye. I can fill that in later if I want to. Do some lines on the fin here. And maybe this one has pointy fins too, like that. Almost like doing two V's, right? A V and then another V here on the outside. Maybe this fish has stripes. It might. That looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Maybe there is a jellyfish floating around here. My jellyfish would be kind of a rainbow shape there. And then I want to do a wave. And I want to do another wave for the thickness of it, right? And then I do jelly squiggles. Like that. And you can have as many of those squiggles as you want to. I could do, hmm, do I want to do the ocean floor down here? Maybe I do. Kind of keep it wavy. I could have coral which is just kind of plants. So I would do kind of sticks of coral just by doing these random wiggly shapes like that. They almost look like tree branches. I could have lots of that if I wanted to. So doing all these tree branches, these coral sticks. Try and keep it random looking, right? You don't want them all to look the same. I could have some of those fluffy round things. I don't know what they are. Maybe these are sea sponges. You can kind of make up some stuff. There's all kinds of weird things in the ocean. It doesn't all have to be sea creatures that you know. Maybe I want to do a snail and do a spiral and then I don't don't close it and then come back this way so it's flat on the bottom and then I can have two little eyes poking out. Maybe I want to do a crab which would just be an oval I'm going to do two eyes, big eyes, right? And then I can have two little sticks coming out here, and those are going to be my claws. And I need the legs, right? Crabs have kind of pointy legs, so I like to do them almost like a spider leg, but not as many. They only have six instead of eight. 
pointy. Nice and pointy. That kind of looks like a crab, and I could add patterns on the back of my crab if I want to. I could do, what else could I do? Other kinds of fish. Oh, maybe I want to do a puffer fish. Those are fun. So puffer fish is like a big circle. If it's not perfect, that's okay, right? We're just keeping it loose. And then it's got big lips, big eyes. And see how the lips are just two little ovals? The big eyes. You could do them very kawaii if you want to. Like that. And then to do the puffy parts, we want to have the little tiny fins that stick out that are so funny on those puffer fish. And then it's just doing upside down V's all the way around, or this little, on the bottom, they're right side up V's. You're just doing V's all over to make the spines on those puffer fish. Poor puffer fish, something must have scared him. Okay, oh, that's fun, isn't it? You could put a little treasure chest down here if you wanted to by doing a rainbow and then a straight line and then doing half of the rainbow down. And then you do a line across here and then a line across here and you keep those lines going. And then you want to do a lock, right? Which is like a horseshoe. And then, straight, and then you can do your keyhole on the lock. And we want to erase that line in the middle of the lock there. You could come back, follow, follow this curve on the front part of your rainbow here, like that. Now it looks like a treasure chest, huh? And those go up and down. What could be in there? Maybe we could have some pearls coming out of it. Maybe we have some gems on the ocean floor below it. Maybe a necklace. There's all these little circles coming out here. Maybe some gold coins, huh? With just, just ovals and then some lines that come down and then close the oval off again. You could put, draw a little something on there if you wanted to. You could have all kinds of stuff in there. Hmm. I bought some bubbles. I think that looks pretty cool. If you want to make your bubbles look shiny, you can add some lines here. Those look pretty good, right? Think I'm ready to color this. What do you guys think? I'm gonna use watercolor pencils. So watercolor pencils are just like regular colored pencils, except for after you get them wet, they turn into paint. These are new watercolor pencils. I have not used these before. These are the Prismacolor ones, and I only have a few colors. I've got red and green and black and a blue, um, kind of a brown and then a yellow. If you have regular watercolor, you can use regular watercolor. If you have just colored pencils, that's fine. You can use just the colored pencils, whatever you have. But I'm going to use my watercolor pencils. And I'm going to just color it in just like I was using regular colored pencils. And you guys can color with me, okay? We're going to color together. I might speed this up a little bit when I do the video, but you guys can do it however you want to. But try and mix your colors together. So I'm doing hair, but I don't want to do all yellow hair. I'm going to do a mixture of the yellow and the brown, okay? But we're going to color this in. Try and mix your colors up. We're going to color the whole picture, okay, guys? So I'm going to put some music on for us. And I might speed it up, but you guys take your time. We're going to color our picture together, okay?
great thing about the watercolor pencils is that you can layer the colors and they'll mix. So you'll notice that I did pink up here, which is actually just my red, but put on very thinly. Okay, so that's gonna be a pink right now, but I'm going to add some yellow to it. And then it's gonna kind of mix and make an orangey color. And that orange is gonna be even more exaggerated when we add the water to it. But I just wanted to point that out real quick. sure that you're going around your shapes. You don't want to accidentally fill in something that you didn't want to. And you'll notice how I'm not being super careful to fill the whole thing in. If you're using colored pencils, you do want to fill everything in. If you're using watercolor pencils, it doesn't matter quite so much because the water is going to come in and fill the gaps. Okay, so if we were using colored pencil, we would want to be a lot more careful than we are using our watercolor pencils. So. I would never leave this much of the paper exposed if I was doing regular colored pencils. But be careful not to overlap your colors it, that you don't want to mix. So there's going to be some areas where we, we overlap on purpose because we do want them to mix. Can you guys see how I'm using the side of the pencil? That's so I don't create hard lines. If I can use the, the point of the pencil, some of those lines might not blend out later when I use my water. everything colored in. Oh, I missed a little bit of pink on her face. She would have a funny colored face if I didn't add a little bit of pink onto there, but I'm not putting a lot. Okay, so now we want to take a clean, soft brush, and I'm going to start with the lightest colors first. I'm going to dunk my brush into the water so it's damp but not drippy. And I'm going to start with the plain yellow. Do all the colored ones. See, oh my goodness, look how bright that yellow gets when we add the water to it. That's what you want. Those colors are going to just foam right up and be very bright, very vibrant, gorgeous. 
You're gonna need to add a little bit of water here and there as you go, but that's okay. So it's gonna brighten the color up and fill in the shape just like we wanted it to. There's a couple, anything that you wanna be white, you wanna leave the white of the paper there, okay? Anything that you wanted color. If you missed it, that's okay. You're going to add it back in later. There we go. Now this is gonna be a lighter yellow because one, I'm adding more water, and two, I use less paint, um, less of the, the pencil on it when I started drawing it initially. And that's what's making this lighter. If I wanted it darker, I would have colored more thickly with the pencil. Okay, go right up to the other shapes, but don't overlap because otherwise that color will start coming out into there. Okay, there we go. If you missed a spot, you can always go back and add the color to it later. So it's not the end of the world. See how that gold comes out as a darker yellow than down here? That's because I filled the golden with the pencil very thickly and I'm being very gentle with the gold of my sand down here. But it is really fun to see how the color brightens up when we add the water, isn't it? Very cool, go around those shapes. Part of the reason that we're doing all the color at once is so that our colors don't get muddy. That's why we're doing all the yellow at once is so it doesn't, you know, after we've dunked into the blue, our water will turn blue and then it might turn our yellow green. So that's part of the reason. The other part is so that when we move on to the next color, we're gonna give this yellow time to dry before we color in the pieces that are right next to it, before we color in Mr. Crab down here and our sea sponges, we wanna give the yellow time to dry, that way the colors don't bleed together, okay? So that's part of the reason why I'm doing it this way. So, and this might be a little challenging for some of you who've never done this kind of a picture before, and that's okay. It's fun to be challenged once in a while. So I'm gonna move on to the orange next. Oh yeah, look at that. It almost makes kind of a goldfish type color. We've got a little, it's still pretty yellow, but there's a bit of those bright spots of the orange coming through where we had our red. Okay, it's okay to add a little bit more water if your brush starts to get dry. We don't wanna scrub and overbrush because it'll make our picture get very kind of dingy looking. And then I'm gonna go into her hair. So her hair has some of that bright yellow, but then there's other parts where it's got a little bit of that brown. You see it? So it kind of gives her hair like she's got some extra texture into it. She's got some highlights in her hair where it's just yellow. And then she's got some darker areas of her hair where the brown is mixed in there too. She's got two-tone hair. Magical mermaid hair. Cool. Very cool. And I'm not using too big of a brush here because if my brush is too big, then I'm gonna lose track of all my details. And I don't wanna lose track of all my details because then it would be a very boring picture because you wouldn't be able to tell what it is. It would just be big blobs of color, which is not exciting. Whereas this mermaid right now, her golden hair with its little brown highlights are kind of exciting. Okay, so we're gonna paint all these colors. And if her hair mixes a little bit, that's not a big deal because it's still all her hair, right? It's okay if these colors mix a little bit. You kind of want them to, so it's not so solid. Then give it a rinse. And I'm gonna go, hmm, I guess I'll do the chest next because that's already kind of a brown color. So I lost my pearls, didn't I? I forgot they were there and I painted right over them. That's all right. I could always bring them back with a little bit of white acrylic paint or I could use a white paint pen later if I wanted to, but I think it's okay that my pearls got lost. I'm not worried about my pearls. Okay, then I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna do her tail. So I'm gonna start in the yellow because that's the lighter. You always wanna start with the lighter color instead of the darker color. And the reason is that the darker colors are gonna have a lot more influence on the lighter colors than the lighter colors do. So if I started with the green, then later you wouldn't even be able to tell that I had the yellow on the tip of her tail there. See how that green's mixing with the yellow? Cool color, huh? Okay. I'm not over blending. Don't over brush. There we go. Look at that. Oh my goodness, it's such a bright color. It's what a difference that water makes, huh? 
here we've got no totally dry, no water. And here, after we've added the color, how bright and brilliant it is. Like an emerald green. We can still see her scales through. What we might do at the end, uh, or what you could do if you wanted to at home, after your watercolor is dry, you could go back with a marker or a pen, or even just a darker pencil, um, and you can add in some of those details with a more brilliant color. I'm gonna rinse that again, and I'm gonna do the pink on her bikini top that I made here, her pink bow bikini top. And since I was so light with that red, it comes out pink. Same as on my jellyfish, which I'm being really careful not to get into the water or my jellyfish will turn purple, which still might look good. I think it would probably still look good. And then I'm gonna do the pink on my sea sponges down here and my snail. And this is kind of an orangey sea sponge because I put the yellow on that one. Which sea sponge do you like better? I don't know. I'm torn. I'm going to take a little bit of that orangey and put it over here. I think I like that that mix. That's kind of fun. And then I can do my coral, which is a darker pink. So it's not quite red, but it's definitely a darker pink on here because I put more of the red on there. Do that next. And we're keeping it pretty thin, guys, with the water. You don't want to use too much water or your picture is going to be droopy and it won't dry very well. Then I'll do the lips. Ooh, look at those. And I'll do my crab. Hey, Mr. Crab. Ooh, look at you. Careful to go around his eyes. We don't want to lose his eyes. Could be Mrs. Crab. I think it's Mr. Crab. Probably because I'm thinking of Sebastian from The Little Mermaid. But was he a crab or a lobster? I think he was a lobster, wasn't he? It's been a long time. I might need to rewatch that movie. And then I might give my puffer fish a little bit of pink on his lips or her lips. So I already had it on my brush. I might as well. I'm going to do her lips there. And I'm going to rinse my brush out again. And let's do her skin. So if you want a darker skin tone, you can add a little bit more brown. If it's coming out too yellow, we might just have to put a little bit more pink on it. But I feel like she'd probably be pretty pale anyway. If she spends a lot of time underwater, she probably doesn't get much sunshine. So I'm making her pretty pale. But if you want her to be darker skin, then it's okay. You can add a little bit of brown or a little bit more pink. You could even have a blue skinned mermaid if you want to, although she would blend in with the water. Then she'd probably be like a camouflage mermaid, huh? Camo mermaid with lots of blues. That would definitely be a camouflage mermaid. There we go. Oh, I like that, that looks pretty cool. So now we're ready for our blue. And I didn't do it before, but I'm going to now. I'm gonna give her some blue eyes because I'll match the ocean. And any other details you wanted to add, you could always, I might blue up my diamond a little bit there. There we go. I'm gonna use a bigger brush on the ocean just because I feel like I'm gonna run out of time if I don't, be really careful to go around your bubbles. And this, and if you lose a little, it's okay, but it's gonna take some time, isn't it, going around these shapes. But what you could do, if you don't wanna go around your bubbles, is you could just paint over them. And look, I put a little bit of green in the back of my ocean there. See how that blends, the blue and the green? Isn't that pretty? Super pretty, I really like that. But what you could do, is you could go back with a paint pen or like I said, a bit of acrylic paint and brush it. Watercolor won't cover over other watercolors. So you won't be able to go back and change it with the watercolor paint. That's not gonna be something you can do. White watercolor doesn't cover up color. So you just gotta be careful, okay? What do we say? Better to be careful than to be fast, right? Take your time, do it right. If you make a mistake, don't fuss. It's not the end of the world. It's just a natural painting. It's gonna look like, you know, like a handmade artist piece, just like what it is, okay? That almost looks like a heart there in her hair, doesn't it? Okay, so take your time, relax. Okay, I'm gonna put on some relaxing music for us to paint too because I feel like that's gonna help us be patient if we have nice, relaxing, soothing music.
Okay, I'm liking that. All right, so this next step is optional. You can either let your picture dry and you could do it after your picture is dry or you don't even have to do it at all. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my black watercolor pencil. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna bring this over so you can see, I'm gonna dunk it into the water, being careful only to get the, the pencil portion wet. I'm only getting this part wet. I don't wanna get the wood. I just wanna get the color of my pencil wet. Okay, so I'm gonna get that wet and then I'm going to use this to do my outlines. Okay, because it's a nice, rich, dark color. If I did marker right now, what would happen? If I did marker, what would happen is that it would be, it would ruin my marker. The color would be all washed out from how wet the watercolor is. So I'm being very careful. I'm just using the tip of the pencil and I'm only outlining what I want to outline. Okay, I could, if I were, if I wanted to be patient, I could do this, like I said, after everything's dry. I could do it with either a marker or a pen after everything's all dry. But you know what? Sometimes it's fun to do things a little differently. So I'm going to, I don't do a lot of watercolor pencil outlining, so I'm going to take my time and very carefully just outline my details in the watercolor pencil. When the watercolor pencil gets dry, it's not going to lay down as well. It'll look more gray than black. So that's how I'll know if it's not quite where it should be. Okay, so right now I have to dunk in pretty frequently to get it to be the color I want it to be. Later, after my pencil gets more saturated, I won't have to dunk quite as much. And this is something, like I said, it's completely optional. So if you're still coloring, you can continue to color if you're painting, you can continue to paint. Probably our friends who are doing the colored pencil are gonna be the ones who are gonna take the longest. Colored pencil takes a long time when you do it right. But try and make sure that you're gonna color things that you're not gonna rub with your elbow, okay? Because you don't wanna bump something that you've already done and have it not come out very nice. So you wanna take your time, work. If you're a lefty, you're gonna work from right to left. If you're right-handed, which I'm right-handed, I'm coming from the right side of my picture, then I'm gonna work on the left side of my picture first. That way I don't make a big mess, okay? So I'm starting over here. I'm just, you don't have to outline everything, just outline what you want to, but just to give it a little extra pizzazz, a little extra detail, right? Look at that. Just helps everything show up a little bit better, look a little bit more nice. I can't even, fill in, maybe I want this fish to be black with yellow stripes. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in. If it doesn't, if my pencil gets too dry, what I can do is I can just go back and brush some watercolor over it. Okay, so right now I'm just, you can see where it's starting to get dry. See how it's turning a little bit more gray and less black? That's because my pencil's dry. The areas where it's really dark or my pencil's wet. So you will be able to tell pretty easily when your pencil starts to dry out. Right there, it's getting dry again. But you don't want to dunk too high up in the water, otherwise you'll ruin your pencil. So you just want to be gentle with this. Be kind of, less is more with the water on this, guys. Less is more. I feel like that we say that a lot in life, don't we? We say less is more a lot. Still true. So just to show you what it does when you add a little bit of the water back on top of the black. Darkens it right up, doesn't it? Couldn't even tell the difference. Ta-da! I'm gonna continue my outlining. You can do your bubbles if you wanna get your bubbles, that's optional, but I'm gonna do my bubbles. They'll show up better, especially since, I don't know about you guys, but I accidentally colored over a few of my bubbles. That's all right though. It's okay, the bubbles don't have to be perfect. The whole picture doesn't have to be perfect. It's just for fun. Are you gonna give your picture as a gift to anybody? Or is it gonna go on your refrigerator? Or are you gonna put it in a picture frame? Hang it in your room? Whatever you do, I hope you don't stuff it in a closet somewhere. I hope you get to see it. If not forever, at least for a little while, you wanna be able to see your artwork for a little while. Outline down here. And again, you don't have to outline everything. You can just outline parts of it. 
when it starts to get dry. What I'm doing there, when it starts to get dry, I'm gonna I'm rotating my pencil because not all of the pencil is gonna get dry all at once. So some of it is still gonna have a little bit of that watercolor on it. Look how fun this is. Do you guys do a lot of watercolor pencil? If you don't, you're getting your practice today, huh? It's definitely darker when you come in, dip in from the pencil, dip in, in the water, isn't it? Just gives you a little bit more control. A little bit more control. And like I said, if you don't want to outline, if you get all done coloring or all done painting and you think, oh my goodness, that's perfect, I don't want to outline, she can't make me, you are absolutely right, I can't make you. But I do really like the way it looks on mine, but you do yours however you want. Okay, looking good guys. It's up to you if you want to add the scales back in or anything like that, but I do want to say don't forget to sign your picture because years and years and years from now you are going to want to remember that it was you who made this and not your older brother or sister and mom and dad or grandma and grandpa or whoever you decide to give your picture to would definitely like to know who did it. So great work. I can't wait to see you guys again another day to do some more artwork. Bye.